Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and congratulations on getting to this stage in the day. Um, my name's Arthur McKeown, and I've been asked to talk about marketing and the language of marketing, about managers and how it can help managers, particularly in an English language environment, and indeed beyond that, how it can help making well-informed decisions. So if I may, I'm going to be taking this agenda, and with respect to Hugh Deller, who was here yesterday, I'm afraid I'm so well EFL trained that I'm going to present the concepts, I'm going to show you how it has worked in practice, and then I'm going to ask you to apply it. Um, my name's Arthur McKeown, and you'll find out more about me at arthurmckeown.com. But briefly, for those who don't know me, my background is in... English language teaching. I worked in EFL for nigh on 20 years as a teacher, teacher trainer and centre manager. But for the last 20 years, and I can see you doing the arithmetic, um, I've been working in the teaching of business and management to native speakers. And I do have an interest in the use of online resources of various sorts. I worked as a teacher, teacher trainer, centre manager in three different continents, and I'm not going to do the geography bit, but Sweden, Kuwait, and then Libya. I've done work for the Open University, and I'm a great fan of online learning and distance learning, but for the last 20 years, I have taught native speaker managers at certificate, diploma, bachelor's and master's level in the University of Ulster, people who work in private sector, public sector, or more recently in the community and voluntary sector. I do have an interest in Moodle and also in MOOCs. Bit of quick bit of research. Who's heard of used a MOOC? Uh -huh. If you don't do anything else after the session with me today, go and find out more about Massive Open Online Courses, and you will probably find a good one on marketing. I know they're there because I've looked at them. You'll also find them in other areas of management. But I'll come back to that towards the end. So this is the, the input bit, the, some of the concepts. Marketing has to start with needs or wants. And if you take a product like Trevor Bayliss and the Clockwork Radio, that has changed lives in parts of the world. There's a real need or a want for it. But he got the idea from simply watching a television program and he had an aha moment. He realised that you didn't need batteries to be able to provide um, radio and news to people. There are other products like Doggles, Doggles.com. <laughs> question. I don't have time for questions, but a quick one. Where do you think they're, and I use the word advisedly, where do you think they're headquartered? Barking. Sorry? Barking. Not in Barking. That's not what, uh, no. San Francisco. When you're riding the Harley Davidson with the hound on the back, if you're fashion conscious, you will spend $20 getting, is there a real need for them? Perhaps as a fashion statement, yes, but not, they're not life-changing in the way that um, perhaps the clockwork radio is. And then there's things like the dog wash. And you might run a petrol station. I believe there's one somewhere in Dublin like Ballymun. Anybody seen a dog wash? Uh, whereabouts is it? Uh, yes, uh -huh. If I ran a petrol station, I might have an idea. Should I be putting something like that onto my petrol station and get more people coming, not only to fill the car, but to wash the dog? And this is where I might have an idea for it, but can I test its feasibility and viability? And that's where market research. We identify a need, then we have to research the market. And there are some tools and techniques that can be used. Please take a few notes and look at these later. There's no exam at the end of my session. There's not even a test. But there may be things now that I mentioned that merit a little bit further inquiry. First thing is, you don't have to do it yourself. Perhaps somebody's already done it. There are sources of secondary research. But beyond that, you may find that there are free 
executive summaries at a resource called keynote.co.uk. Another one is Mintel, which is mintel.ie, which is a little bit more Irish. But if you look at secondary research about the film industry for, say, 2011, how up to date would you say that is? Reason, today is the day of the Oscars. It's something that's four years old. Is it? Sorry? It's, it's not really as up to date. You would want something that was 2014 to 2015. It gets worse. What about the music industry for 2006? Uh -huh. So, you see, you have to be sensitive in using this information. But beyond that there, you may need primary research. Now, this is where questionnaires or a focus group or something like that can be relevant. Things that you're probably doing anyway when your students are leaving as exit interviews and so on. If it's a theatre, it might be box office data. It could be questionnaires, or if it's a theatre like the Lyric in Belfast, Friends of the Lyric, Friends of the Abbey, that will give them you know, information as they research the market. Certainly look at keynote.co.uk. The resource is free to get the executive summary. And while there isn't one on the English language teaching world per se, there are some on things like training, management, development, and so on. Also, Survey Monkey was mentioned this morning, but this is a way where, for free, with the basic version, you can design questionnaires and the like to hand out either electronically or on paper. And if you want, like, brief 10-minute videos on YouTube and similar, this is a guy, he used to be an Air Force General in America, but now he teaches leadership and management. His name's William Cohen, and there are little lecturettes about, for example, in this case, market research for small and medium-sized businesses. So you identify a need, you then test the viability and feasibility by doing some market research. And if the vibes are good, then you move into the sunny uplands of decisions to be made around what we call the marketing mix. And if you've studied management or marketing, you'll I'm sure have come across a number of P's. There's the product, the price, the promotion and the place. And these are things where you have to make decisions. What price are we going to charge? What exactly are we offering? And what benefit will people get from the product or the service? How are we going to set a price for it? How are we going to promote it and tell people about it? How are we going to get it to them? Indeed, within a language school environment, you probably have to think about an additional three P's. You have to think about the people the people who are involved in the student journey as they come through um, your hands, the various operational processes involved, and then the facilities, the premises, all that sort of thing. These provide an opportunity for the senior management team to have a certain amount of discussion and debate as they move towards making decisions that can then be fed into the marketing plan. If you want one book on this subject area, you'll probably come across a guy called Philip Kotler, the guru of marketing. His books are American, but they have nevertheless set you know, the uh, groundwork for a lot of the approaches adopted in the academic study of marketing. And he puts together the plan, the headings for a plan, you have to introduce the context in which the plan operates and then say something about things that were talked about yesterday by Fiona. Um, steep analysis, SWOT analysis, who are your stakeholders? You also have to think about the customers and your comp Have you got any competitors? How are they doing? What are they doing that's perhaps similar or analogous to yourself? And then your USP. What's so special about you, your unique selling point? You then have to spell out the decisions you've made about the product or service to be offered and how you're going to price it, promote it, and get it to people. 
And I would strongly commend to my own students the idea that they put this into a Gantt chart or activity plan for recommendations. So that's the presentation stage. How does this work in practice? Um, I want to give you an example called the Belfast Programme. Um, I came across um, an opportunity recently to build English language for a successful transition. It's very good. It's important to get a good name, right? You're happy with that one? Uh, I can see Bray is happy. Um, the Horn of Africa, People's Aid, Northern Ireland, 700 people, they need an English language programme to help them make that transition into citizenship. They're from Djibouti and Eritrea, Ethiopia, um, uh, Somalia. They are people who have often had a very disrupted educational experience and in some cases may not be literate in Arabic, let alone aspiring to learn English. And in the work I've been able to do, it's been helping them to prepare for a beginner course. The aha moment for this, my equivalent of the Trevor Bayliss moment, came in Ethan's in Dublin, where I saw Murphy's heaped high. Have you been in the basement? Of, I didn't, this is not Photoshop, this is a real picture. Uh, <laughs> elementary, intermediate, upper, intermediate, advanced. And I was aware that there's not just Murphy with English grammar in use, but there's migrants who would be using other self-study material by Raymond McCarthy and Felicity O'Tell, not for grammar, but for vocabulary. And I was aware that sometimes these people who don't have a lot of money, they're meeting up using self-study material They've been to www.meetup.com. They could go salsa dancing or cooking, but what they're doing is meeting to improve their English with other nationalities. We've also started to put some of it into a Moodle environment for self-access, and there's a MOOC. So you've had the four and then the seven P's of marketing. There you've got the seven M's. Oh, no, there's one more. Um, McKeown. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> If you put all of those together, you can then start to put it into a very simple but very robust model. What's the product? How are we going to price it or fund it, promote it, get it to people? And I'm more or less out of time, so all I can say is that is how we've populated it. The promotion with local priests I will talk about afterwards. His name is Father Raphael Vatai from Cavan. He knows everyone. Uh -huh. <laughs> Online peer support is important. It's low touch. It's done in Ulster. It can be done elsewhere. It's adults. There are competitors. We have got a prototype coming together. We're refining it. And then there's the opportunities to transfer it elsewhere. I finish with one last observation, and I'm looking at Peter here because I think I'm at negative time now, but you can interestingly apply the same eight boxes to your own continuing professional development. Now, I haven't got a slide for that one, but I think in the light of what people have been talking about over the last couple of days, what is it that you've got to offer as a product your skills, your qualifications, your experience, your networks. How you, you know, what's a decent wage or salary for what you could expect to get for that set of skills, qualifications, and so on? Are you doing as much as you could or should be doing to make use of social media to let the world know about you and promote yourself? You know, where are you prepared to work? There's opportunities face-to-face, -face, but also online. And then, who are your com customers, competitors? What's so special about you? And what are you going to do about it? So, with respect to Hugh Deller yesterday, and with thanks to Fiona for covering off some of the things that I have mentioned today, I hope I've given you an idea of how the language of marketing isn't that mystical. An awful lot of it is just common sense in a structured way that can bring benefit to you, your organisation, and indeed the sector within which you work. Thank you for your attention. Any questions for Arthur? I, 
I have one while that, that's settled, which is um, <laughs> student, or teachers mostly are delivering a product that's been marketed, that's been sold. So how much do we need to know about the marketing? Uh, I think it could be useful to know, you know what were the decisions um, that led to a particular student turning up on a class? Why did they prefer, perhaps, to come to your school rather than to one of your competitors? Or why did they come to Dublin rather than to Brighton or Bournemouth or beyond? You know, so just even you know, as a way of getting into, you know, how did they hear about it? How was the programme promoted? You know, it's a bit different than just you know, maybe the normal um, first lesson chat about interviewing it gives a little bit of a semi-structured approach to that. Mm-hmm. To, to know how to, what their expectations are. Yes. So, mm-hmm. It strikes me that a lot of what you're talking about there could be material for Durham. Yeah, I, I've used the, 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 I had six Ps, now I had seven Ps. Six Ps, you know, uh-huh. brought in lots of different products. And yes. The, the students would kind of say which Ps are most important when they bought this. So it, yeah. it really worked excellently. Uh-huh. Sort yeah. of thing, yeah. But it is something which just yeah. gives you simple but sufficient yeah. analytical tools then to make some decisions about should we be putting our prices up or putting our prices down, promoting in different ways. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you